this seventh Sunday of Easter worship service at Church of Our Savior in Fond du Lac. Please join in singing the gathering hymn.
your Son, Jesus Christ, suffered for us and ascended to your right hand. Unite us with Christ and each other in suffering and in joy, that all the world may be drawn into your bountiful presence. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is from the book of Acts, chapter 1. When the apostles had come together, they asked, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying, Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 68 Let God arise, and let God's enemies be scattered. Let those who hate God flee. As smoke is driven away, so you should drive them away. As the wax melts before the fire, so let the wicked perish at the presence of God. But let the righteous be glad and rejoice before God. Let them also be merry and Sing to God, sing praises to God's name, exalt the one who rides the clouds. I am as that may rejoice before God. In your holy habitation, O God, you are Father to orphans, defender of widows. You give us solitary a home and bring forth prisoners in. But the rebels shall live in desert places. O oh God, when you went forth before your people, when you marched through the wilderness, the earth quaked and the skies poured down rain at the presence of God, the God of Sinai, at the presence of God, the God of Your people found their home in it. In your goodness, O oh God, you have made provision for the poor. Sing to God, O oh kingdoms of the earth. Sing praises to the Lord. You ride in the heavens, O oh God, in the ancient heavens. You send forth your voice. Your mighty voice. Ascribe power to God, whose majesty is over Israel, whose strength is in the skies. How wonderful you are in your holy places, O God of Israel, giving strength and power to your people. Blessed be God. The second reading 
is from 1 Peter. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that is taking place among you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice in so far as you are sharing Christ's sufferings, so that you may also be glad and shout for joy when his glory is revealed. If you are reviled for the name of Christ, you are blessed, because the spirit of glory, which is the spirit of God, is resting on you. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Discipline yourselves, keep alert. Like in your faith, for you know that your brothers and sisters in all the world are undergoing the same kinds of suffering. And after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to be his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, support, strengthen, and establish him, you. To, be, to him be the power forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. According to St. John, the 17th chapter, Glory to you, O Lord. After Jesus had spoken these words, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son so that the Son may glorify you. Since you have given him authority over all people, to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence, with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them, and they have received them and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I'm not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours and yours are mine and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one, as we are one. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. O oh Christ. Grace and peace to each and every one of you from our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This gospel lesson that I read this, just a moment ago is a prayer. And it's not just any prayer, but it's the prayer that Jesus prayed when he was in the upper room with his disciples 
just hours before he would be arrested and put on trial. Jesus had gathered with his disciples, had shared a meal, he had washed their feet, he instituted what we know as the Lord's Supper. He taught them many things. And then he prayed. He prayed to his Father in heaven for himself, for his disciples then, and his disciples throughout the ages. In this gospel story, this prayer of Jesus, we get to overhear Jesus praying for us. There are two words in this prayer that are used repeatedly, the word glorify and the word give. These two words are used so often that it almost seems that Jesus is praying in circles. But as I pondered this prayer of Jesus, I came to understand that his prayer, talking of glorifying and being given, is all about being known. God being known by us, and we being known by God. To glorify someone is to reveal their splendor and excellence, to reveal their worth. Jesus glorified God, and we came to know the character of God and who God is. Jesus was sent by God to reveal God's love and mercy and grace for all people. We saw that in Jesus' life as he ate with tax collectors and sinners, as he befriended undesirables and touched the unclean. Jesus glorified his Father in word and action, right to his dying breath. In his prayer, Jesus says, I glorified you on earth, by finishing the work that you gave me to do. The Greek word for finishing that's used in the prayer is the same word that Jesus speaks from the cross when he says, it is finished. The ultimate act of glorifying God took place on a cross, an instrument of torture and death. As Jesus hung on the cross, bleeding, suffering, dying, he showed us the immense, unlimited love that God has for us. God spared nothing, not even God's own son, Jesus, in order that we could live forever in a good and right relationship with God. Nothing comes between God and God's people. Not tragedy, not grief, not sickness, not sin, not a coronavirus, not even death. God is utterly and completely devoted to God's people. Jesus' prayer is good news for us especially those of us who feel that God is distant or those of us who feel that somehow we have a connection missing with the divine. God does not ever leave us. We may experience trials and tribulations. We may find ourselves unemployed or homeless. We may watch a loved one die we may be sick, lonely, depressed, frightened. We find ourselves in the midst of a global pandemic where the uncertainty is overwhelming. But nothing, nothing can ever or will ever separate us from God. As St. Paul writes, 
neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor power, nor height, nor anything else in all of creation will ever separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. We may be able to socially distance from one another, but we cannot socially distance from God. God in Jesus is always with us. We belong to God who is fiercely devoted to us and nothing will ever change that. God created us. God claimed us as God's beloved ones in the holy waters of baptism. And God knows us better than we even know ourselves. We cannot hide our hurts from God. We cannot hide our fears or our failings. God knows. God knows our heart. God knows our soul. And God loves us even more. We are called to live in and through the love of God. It's God's love and devotion to us that keeps us going. It's what gives us strength for another day. It's what gives us hope for a brighter tomorrow. In his prayer, Jesus says, and this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. Jesus is not talking about our knowing him and his father with head knowledge by being able to recite doctrines or creedal statements. Jesus is praying that we would know him and his father as we live in relationship with them. It's a relationship where we recognize our dependence upon God who provides for our every need. It's living in a relationship where we can point to the presence and activity of the risen Christ in our lives. And it's living in relationship where we see and feel the movement of the Spirit deepening our faith and moving us to love God by loving our neighbor. Everything we have Everything we are, everything we hope to be, comes from our generous, giving God. When we recognize this, and we are empowered by the Spirit to live out of God's abundance, we give glory to God, who comes to us in Jesus Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus had a mission to give glory to his Father so that all people would come to know and live in relationship with God. Our mission is an extension of Jesus' mission. How we live our lives, the decisions and choices we make, the words we use, the actions we take, say something to others that is incredibly important about the God in whom we live and move and have our being. That doesn't mean we're going to get it right or perfect all the time. We're going to fall and sometimes we're going to fail. But God's forgiveness and love washes over us, giving us another opportunity to love and serve and give glory to God so that the Spirit can work through us and draw others into relationship with the God of love. Our scripture text for the morning ends in the middle of Jesus' prayer with Jesus praying that they may be one as you and I are one. 
To know Jesus is to know his Holy Parent and his Holy Spirit. To know the Holy Parent is to know God's Son, Jesus, through the Holy Spirit. The three persons of the Trinity cannot be separated. They are intertwined, dancing, if you will, in a relationship with one another. So may it be with us. The tri triune God embraces us into the holy dance of relationship with the Trinity and with one another. To know us is to know something of God. And to know something of God is to know something of us and others. That we are loved and forgiven and precious in God's sight. My siblings in Christ, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. You belong to God. Immerse yourself in the love and forgiveness of God who enfolds you into an embrace and will never let you go. Amen.
Let us confess together our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Our Lord Jesus healed many who were sick as a sign of the reign of God come near and sent the disciples to continue this work of healing. Through prayer in Jesus' name and by the laying on of hands, the disciples witnessed to the power and presence of God. In the name of Christ, the great healer and reconciler of the world, we now entrust them to the grace of Jesus Christ, that God may ease their suffering and grant them health and salvation. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, and especially for all those here and around the world who are suffering or are in any affliction. Merciful God, you sent your Son to be our peace. Help all those who suffer any pain or grief, hopelessness, or anxiety, especially Sheila, Norma, Jean, Barb, Nancy, Larry, Carol, Brian, Ted, Fran, Rita, Bobby, Danielle, Marion, Rachel, Troy, Fran, Robin, Valeska, Linda, Carol, Renee, Sandy, Duffy, Delilah, Sherry, Brad, Fran, Carson, Don, Jan, Lowen, Ken, Doug, Gilbert, Libby, Wendy, and all those whose names we carry on our heart. God of peace and reconciliation, bring an end to the sickness of the world, especially violence, terrorism, war, and their causes. Holy God, Holy One, your son prayed that your people may be one. May the gift of baptism be a power for healing the church's brokenness and bless all efforts for renewal and Christian unity. Loving God, mend broken relationships and bring peace to our families, our congregation, 
our communities and the world. Eternal God, we thank you for all the faithful departed and for those whom we remember before you. Heal the pain of all who grieve. O oh God, we bring these intercessions before you, knowing that you will hear us as you have promised and will answer according to the mercy shown in your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The ministry of Jesus invites us to new life in God and with each other. We proclaim the good news that God desires us to be healthy and one in the body of Christ. You are invited to offer yourself, whatever your sickness of spirit, mind, or body, and receive a sign of healing and wholeness in the name of the triune God. If there is someone with you in your home that would be willing to lay hands on your head or on your shoulders, ask them to do so. Otherwise, if you're alone like me right now, I invite you to place your hand over your heart and receive these healing words. In the name of our Savior Jesus Christ, may you be strengthened and filled with God's grace that you may know the healing power of the Spirit. Amen. Now, in remembrance of your baptism, I invite you to make the sign of the cross on your forehead. Child of God, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Let us pray. God of mercy, source of all healing. We give you thanks for your gifts of strength and life, and especially for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, the health and salvation of the world. Help us by your Holy Spirit to feel your power in our lives and to know your eternal love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the God of all consolation bless you in every way and grant you hope all the days of your life. May God restore you to health and grant you salvation. May God fill your heart with peace and lead you to eternal life. Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Trusting in your great mercy, let us pray together the prayer that your Son, the Christ, taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive the blessing. May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen.
Church of our Savior. Your generosity is much appreciated and needed to continue the ministries of the Church. Offerings made by checks may be mailed to Church of Our Savior, 363 South Main Street, Fond du Lac, 54935. Or you may take advantage of online giving options available at the website OurSaviorsFDL.org. Alleluia! Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia! Christ is risen just as he said. Go in peace. Share the good news. Alleluia! Thanks be to God. Alleluia! <laughs>